too. Kira opened her eyes. She was lying on an exam table in sickbay at HQ. Above her, a pair of light strips striped the bracketed ceiling, blue-white and harsh. The air was cool and dry and smelled of familiar solvents. I'm alive. Why was that surprising? And how had she ended up in sickbay? Weren't they supposed to be leaving for the Fidanza? She swallowed, and the foul taste of hibernation fluids caused her to gag. Her stomach turned as she recognized the taste. Cryo? She'd been in fucking cryo? Why? For how long? What the hell had happened? Panic spiked her pulse, and Kira bolted upright, clawing at the blanket that covered her. Gah! She was wearing a thin medical gown, tied at the sides. The walls swam around her with cryo-induced vertigo. She pitched forward and fell off the table onto the white decking, heaving as her body tried to expel the poison inside of her. Nothing came up except drool and bile. Kira! She felt hands turning her over, and then Alan appeared above her, cradling her with gentle arms. Kira, he said again, his face pinched with concern. Shh, 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 it's okay. I've got you now. Everything's okay. He looked nearly as bad as Kira felt. His cheeks were hollow, and there were lines around his eyes she didn't remember from that morning. Morning? How long? She croaked. Alan winced. Almost four weeks. No. Dread sank into her. Four weeks? Unable to believe it, Kira checked her overlays. 1402 GST, Monday, August 16, 2257. Stunned, she read the date twice more. Alan was right. The last day she recalled, the day they'd been supposed to depart Adra, was the 21st of July. Four weeks. Feeling lost, she searched Alan's face, hoping for answers. Why? He stroked her hair. What do you remember? Kira struggled to answer. I... Mendoza had told her to check on the down drone, and then... and then... falling. Pain. Glowing lines and... darkness. Darkness all around. Ah! She scrabbled backwards and clutched at her neck heart pounding. It felt as if something were blocking her throat, suffocating her. Relax, said Alan, keeping a hand on her shoulder. Relax. You're safe now. Breathe. A clutch of agonized seconds, and then her throat loosened and she sucked in a breath, desperate for air. Kira shuddered and grabbed Alan and held him as tight as she could. She'd never been prone to panic attacks, not even during finals for her IPD but the feeling of being suffocated had been so real. His voice muffled by her hair. Alan said, It's my fault. I should never have asked you to check out those rocks. I'm so sorry, babe. No, don't apologize, she said, pulling back enough to look at his face. Someone had to do it. Besides, I found alien ruins. How amazing is that? Pretty amazing he admitted with a reluctant smile. See? Now what? Footsteps sounded outside sickbay and Faisal walked in. He was slim and dark and kept a short faded haircut that never seemed to grow out. Today he was wearing his clinician's jacket and his cuffs were rolled back as if he'd been giving an exam. On seeing Kira, he leaned back out the doorway and shouted, She's up! Then he sauntered past the three patient beds set along the wall, picked up a chip lab off the small counter, squatted next to Kira, and grabbed her wrist. Open. Say ah. Ah. In quick succession, he looked in her mouth and ears, checked her pulse and blood pressure, and felt under her jaw, saying, Does this hurt? No. He nodded, a sharp gesture. You'll be fine. Make sure to drink lots of water. You'll need it after being in cryo. I have been frozen before, said Kira, as Alan helped her back onto the exam table. Faisal's mouth twisted. Just doing my job, Navarez. Uh-huh. Kira scratched her forearm. As much as she hated to admit it, the doctor was right. She was dehydrated, and her skin was dry and itchy. Here, said Alan, and handed her a water pouch. As Kira took a sip, 
Maria Elise, Jenin, and Seppo rushed into sick bay. Kira! There you are. Welcome back, sleepyhead. Behind them, Ivanova appeared, arms crossed, no nonsense. Well, it's about time, Navares. Then Hugo, Nagar, and Mendoza joined them as well, and the entire survey team crowded into sick bay, packing in so close that Kira felt the heat from their bodies and the touch of their breath. It was a welcome cocoon of life. And yet, despite the nearness of her friends, Kira still felt odd and unsettled, as if the universe were out of joint, like a tilted mirror, partly because of the weeks she had lost, partly, she thought, because of whatever drugs Faisal had pumped into her, and partly because, if she allowed herself to sink into the depths of her mind, she could still feel something lurking there, waiting for her. A horrible, choking, suffocating presence, like wet clay being pressed into her nose and mouth. She dug the nails of her right hand into her left forearm and inhaled sharply, nostrils flaring. No one but Alan seemed to notice. He gave her a worried glance and his arm tightened around her waist. Kira shook herself in an attempt to dislodge her thoughts, and looking around at them all said, So, who's gonna fill me in? Mendoza grunted. Give us your report first and then we'll bring you up to speed. It took Kira a moment to realize that the team hadn't come just to greet her. There was an anxious look to them, and as she studied their faces, she saw the same signs of stress as on Alan. Whatever they had been dealing with for the past four weeks, it hadn't been easy. Uh, is this gonna be on the record, boss? She asked. Mendoza's face remained hard and fixed. Unreadable. On the record, Navarez. And it won't just be the company seeing it either. <laughs>